Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> You're chipper this morning. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to share something that hopefully will save you having to ever even go see a relationship coach. Wow. That's a bold <laughs> statement. Well, one thing that, uh, and hi everyone who's joining us, Tanya, Wendy, James, thanks so much for watching live. So one of the things that I notice um, is very typical in our relationship coaching work is when someone comes to see us and we're meeting with them and, you know, we're starting out, they want to share, you know, all of the things that their partner is doing or not doing um, that is really upsetting them. And of course that's understandable. That's why they're seeing us. Um, and so there, there's usually, you know, quite the narrative. What, what I like to call my laundry list of woes. Yes. Angus calls it his laundry list of woes. Um, so that's just a really typical start to the work. And part of what we're, our responsibility is, is to really help our clients see that that list, their laundry list that they come with, their story that they have about their partner, that that is not the direction that we're going to be looking in. And in fact, we have to really help them see that the only way to find an experience of peace of mind and greater inner freedom is to put that list away and to realize that trying to fix their partner, change their partner, have things on the outside be different, that that does not get them to where they think it's way, where they think it's going to take them to. And what, what is available though, is the realization that the experience of well-being, the experience of greater peace of mind, what people are really looking for, their partner isn't taking that away from them. Now, I'm not saying that their partner is behaving perfectly or that there isn't, um, you know, things that are going on that are uh, challenging, but looking at that isn't going to help someone experience that place of well-being that's within themselves. And really, that's what we're going to be pointing to in the work. So in order to have you not have to do any relationship coaching, if you realize that it's so common to in relationships to look and think that when we're not experiencing our own well-being within, when we're out of touch with that and not experiencing it, it's so easy to then look toward our partner and find reasons as to why they're at fault for the fact that we're not experiencing it, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. You okay. my throat this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, uh, it, I was just thinking about this, and in a sense, I, I, well, first and foremost, yeah, we're not doing any laundry when we do relationship work. <laughs> we're actually saying that you've got a whole wardrobe full, filled with beautiful clothing that you can access it at a, at a, in a, instantaneously. We don't have to start agitating all that old, old those old narratives. But I was thinking, in terms of the old narratives, it's almost like. Um, it's last year's computer code. Our intellect is very well equipped to try and figure things out. And then when we get into a low mood, then it's like that intellect will go and access last year's computer code and get very stirred up. So it's always a reflection of that mood and that state of mind. And just understanding that that's really last year's computer code and it's all just an illusion, something that we made up in the moment. And we often want to make our partner the fall guy for our upset or girl, and, or girl <laughs> for our state of mind, just understanding that allows us to just take our hands off the controls and, and, um, and realize that, you know, we have an innate state of well-being that we will always, there's a gravitational force that always pulls us back there. And all we have to do is just leave the computer code alone. It's kind of like, it's almost like that movie Tron, I've said this before. That is like there's this sort of there's there's this there's this, this sort of computer game that we've created over the course of our lives through our intellect, and it's very easy to get sucked into it, like Tron in that movie. And just having the understanding that that's what's going on, understanding, you know, how the mind works, just gives us the opportunity to leave it alone. 
and just accept that we'll come back into well-being. Yeah, that that that's absolutely what our natural state is and understanding how the mind works is so key, but also understanding that well-being <clears throat> is beyond any cause that what we're pointing to when we're talking about well-being, it's impersonal. We're talking about an impersonal state of love that is beyond any cause outside of ourselves. It can only be found within. And ultimately that is where we want to be looking to when we're upset, especially when we're feeling upset, that it's really remembering that the upset is simply a temporary feeling of being disconnected from that essence of who you are. And if you put extra energy into then thinking about why it's your partner's fault, what they've done wrong, making them responsible for um, you having that experience, it just takes you down a rabbit hole that creates more suffering because ultimately there's never going to be an answer there. Your partner is never going to be able to connect you with your well-being because it's inside of you. It doesn't matter how perfect they are, how good they are, how much they try you're still going to have experiences where you get disconnected from your experience of who you really are, you know, what I'm calling well-being. And it's nobody's fault. It's not even your fault. And getting comfortable with the truth of that, that as humans, we go in and out of that deep connection with who we are. Doesn't mean it's not there. Doesn't mean that we've lost something or something's broken. It's just we can get caught up in the illusion of life and the illusion of our thinking. And as Angus is calling it, the last year's computer code. And, and then we, we feel the effect of that internally and we don't feel the peace that's available to us. And for me, having that understanding more deeply available to me on an experiential level really helped me go from you know, spending a lot of time thinking there was something wrong with my relationship, there was something wrong with me, there was something wrong with Angus, because I really thought that my emotional state was a reflection of that. And when I saw that my emotional state was just a normal human emotional state that goes up and down and, you know, all over the place, and it's not anything to be fixed, that's just the nature of the human condition. And that who I am is far greater than just my emotions and just my thoughts, that there's a space within that is a deeper experience of who I am, who we all are, that is um, a taste of greater freedom. And I'm not saying that uh, I've just had touches <clears throat> of that experience, but just a little bit of that was enough to really shift our relationship. Mm -hmm. I think um, maybe when we're in a, a poor state of mind and our intellect can only see black clouds, all we have to remember is the sun is always shining. <laughs> Are you being facetious? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. I wasn't trying to be facetious. <laughs> maybe I was trying to be overly dramatic <laughs> and I missed my mark badly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand. Well, I was that just term. trying to make that be a punctuation point. I thought that, you know, I think that is the case. I think that, you know, we get so caught up in the illusion that we think it's real, that we're in a poor state of mind. And our poor state of mind goes looking for a fool guy. Our poor state of mind goes looking for a narrative to, to press play on. And unfortunately, more often than not, the person that we're most closest to becomes the target of our wrath. And, uh, and really, for me, speaking for myself, it is, it is a case of remembering that I will come back into well-being and to mistrust the sentiment that really is on display when, I, when my, my mood has dipped. It's like that for me is the learning curve, is to always be suspicious of, of the thinking that comes on board when I know that I'm wrapped around the axle of my thinking. Yeah. And, you know, you know what this is for you. You know what your experience of well-being is. You know what your experience of inner peace or inner freedom is um, in personal love. Like nobody can put that into words. So you have to recognize that for yourself. And, and the more you recognize it for yourself, the more you'll see that it really has nothing to do with anything outside of you. And the more you see that the easier it is to navigate anything that's going on outside of you. It just seems to create this beautiful buffer where 
know for myself, I just take things in life a whole lot more lightheartedly, less seriously. When I do get all wrapped up and caught up, I wake up to it sooner and kind of uh, can laugh at myself a little bit at how crazy I got in that moment. And, and it's not about being different. Like I still have all of a lot of the quirks and things and ir irritable things that I do that I know you don't like, and I know you can irritate me. So it's not about we have to um, improve ourselves, but we naturally become more fun and lighthearted and loving and kind when we take our thoughts and feelings less seriously. We just naturally soften our edges, um, get softer, and life seems just that, that much easier and relationships become a whole lot easier. So hopefully you find this helpful. Hopefully it saves you from having to do any relationship coaching yourself because you have what you need within. It's right there. And it's simply remembering that, waking up to that, respecting that, valuing that, and knowing where to look when you're really suffering. The sun. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Have Lots of weekend. love. Have a great weekend. Bye.